So this here is a graph now that's comparing the price of cool electricity to photovoltaic electricity and projections into the future, right? So it goes all the way up to 2020. As you can see, the gray line, which kind of is hidden behind the yellow line from starting from 2012 to 2016, is the price of coal electricity. And as you can see, the price of coal electricity and standard traditional utilities is going up, right? Over time, electricity from utilities from traditional power sources is going up. It's not going down. That's a common trend for all of them, traditionally. But if you look now for renewable energies, in particular photovoltaics, the trend is going down. So the price is going down. And if you look in the middle, by 2016, they intersect. So the price for PV is going to cost the same as electricity generation at the retail level. It's going to cost the same as um, the price for coal, right? And then going forward, um, it's going to get cheaper for solar while coal is going to continue to be expensive. So as someone mentioned to me, the Stone Age is not going to end, didn't end because they ran out of stones, right? So we don't even have to wait for our natural gas users to run out to, to make the switch. It's going to happen when these technologies become more efficient, cleaner, and more economically feasible and, and cheaper than traditional fossil fuels. Right? So this can happen very quickly. It only takes someone to come out with a, a brand new technology out there that's more efficient for, to, to knock the years down even shorter. So this, this is a realistic thing in our lifetime. Right? Um, I don't know if you'll know since because of the disaster in Japan, Japan has just recently taken offline their last nuclear power plant. So now they're looking at dr dramatically at looking at placing that shortfall with renewables right? and more clean technology and safer, inherently safer technologies. As well as um, Germany is going to get rid of all their nuclear plants by 2022, and they are going full steam ahead with renewables. Right? There are certain states within Germany that have 46% of their power generated by renewables. So that's a mixture of wind, um, biomass and photovoltaics. So the market is extraordinary, right? And you know, a lot of times the old uh, status quo will say, well, PV is, uh, can only, it can't provide base load because, you know, you only get sun during the day. What happens at night? You know, it's not a, it's not a realistic thing to supply all your needs. But if you have, for example, wind, they say, well, it's the same thing as wind. If wind is, uh, it's only windy certain times in the day, it's not windy all the time, you can't provide base load. But if you have different plants in different parts of the country, right? Um, let's say one place is, might have wind, the other place might not have wind. You're, you're sort of hedging your bets with what's happening with the energy sector. So at each point in time, you're, 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 you're creating a safety zone by having multiple um, sources, multiple um, renewable energy sources that could then create a stable energy supply, right? Which is the whole point of a grid. So even with coal-fired power plants, they have downtimes as well, and their downtimes are not predictable, like with solar or like when you can actually predict, based on the weather, what's gonna happen to a certain degree. But with coal-fired power plants, they can go down for months, they're very centralized, large sections of power go down, and it's, so it makes, so that argument is, is null and void, right? So they have instability issues as well. So, as you can see here, in the future, renewables is definitely going to take, take a larger role. 